Hi, I'm Steph Morris and I'm reading from my translation of Edgar Zelger's So You Finally Found Us, or in German, Hast Du Uns Endlich Gefunden, a novel set in 60s West Germany, narrated by a child, which published in German by Rovolt Verlag, as yet not published in English. But available on the New Books in German website. This is the beginning. I'm off to practice, my father says, disappearing into the piano room and shutting the door behind him. He spends every spare minute at his ground practicing. With nothing much to do, I stay in the hall, but it's not as boring as all that. I can listen or I can hold conversations in my head and sometimes someone comes by and talks to me. My father is practicing for the home concert. As soon as one is over, the next comes onto the horizon. We pretty much live between concerts. They actually consist of two performances each time. In the morning, the inmates from the Borstal next door come. Not all of them, of course, there are 400, but around 80, certainly. My father makes a selection. As governor, he has a good overview. In the evening, my parents' friends are invited, academic couples from our small town. The week before is stressful. I pick up on that because I spend so much time out here in the hall. It's pretty long, like a bowling alley, and everyone has to walk past me. You can grasp the tension in handfuls. My father has to master the tricky sections and practices the same passages over and again, obsessively, sometimes slowly, sometimes fast. Some of them get better, some refuse to yield, some remain delicate. My mother feels the pressure too. She's up to here with the preparations. Although food is not the main thing, not at all. It's constantly emphasized that the concert isn't about food. It's still nice to offer people a little something. And the inmates shouldn't be deprived either. They get liver sausage sandwiches and apple juice. But what stresses my mother the most is dealing with the professional violinist. He comes a few days early from Hamburg, stays with us and rehearses with my father. He is fussy about food. As soon as he arrives, everything revolves around him. He's an artist, calls the shots and sets the standards, not solely in musical areas. My father should be grateful he gets to accompany such a musician. He's very lucky. And although he normally radiates self-confidence, funny and quick-witted with it, he panders to this artist unquestioningly. For her hospitality, my mother receives a free lesson from the Hamburg violinist. She needs to be well prepared for that, yet barely has time to practice. Still, she is grateful. A lesson from such an outstanding virtuoso is quite something. But she always goes around with tear-stained eyes afterwards. His merciless criticism of her playing distresses her. And when I meet her in the corridor like that, it upsets my stomach. There's no talking to her, and she just shakes her head when I ask what's up. And skipping forward to a later section. We have a diary of his from the war, just a few pages, 20 maybe. My mother tore the rest out. You won't understand it, she said, especially you, Edgar. You'd be quite capable of having it all published. They'd rather throw it in the bin right away. What's left is a description of his visit home to Königsberg for Christmas 42 a touching declaration of love for his wife and my older brothers and his mother and his brothers. He was coming from Belarus and had 12 days leave. The journey took him from Orsha via Vitebsk and Bialystok and through the Delaus into East Prussia, a journey he made carrying two heavy suitcases and a rucksack, all full of things to eat, plucked poultry, geese and ducks, cuts, cuts of venison, skinned rabbits, Tightly packed, layered one on top of the other and pressed down, naked, bloody and wrapped in newspaper. He dragged these suitcases through railway stations, up and down stairs, all for the family and for his elder brother from Hamburg, who was visiting Königsberg at the time. On his return home, he was to stop off in Berlin and leave a goose for their father and a duck for his father-in-law and take a rabbit for himself and his nearest and dearest. For his own mother, in Königsberg, who lived round the corner from him on Trommelplatz, my father had a saddle of venison in his rucksack. 
and for my mother and brothers at Seatonplatz, another goose and a duck. And for their friends who would come by over the next 12 days, there was something too. And for himself, of course, because he did love to eat meat. The lean years were yet to come. Perhaps he sensed that. Another meal, just like we had in peacetime, he wrote repeatedly in his diary. And where did it all come from, everything they were eating? The Germans were fighting a war of sustenance against the Soviet Union. Whole regions were declared eat clean zones. The Russian eaters were either shot or dispatched to the Reich, where they were to exhaust their physical strength in German munitions factories. Anyone old or weak or useless must starve to death, slowly, because the Russian administration must still be kept in place until the war was won. I've been reading from Edgar Zelga's So You Finally Found Us, Hast du uns endlich gefunden, from Rovod Verlag. Thank you.